Once again, incredible things have been revealed about our space. The James Webb Space Telescope just made an incredible discovery about our Sun. The observation of a distant star shows us for the first time what our Sun looked like shortly after its birth and gives us new answers about the mystery of star formation. Would you ever have believed that the new space telescope would show us the cosmos in a completely new way? It was clear that James Webb would be a little better than the old Hubble telescope, but the fact that it's so much better regularly sends astronomers into raptures. Space enthusiasts and amateur astronomers now also eagerly await every new image from the super telescope. Let's admire a few of the telescope's latest strokes of genius together. This fantastic and razor-sharp image shows the Whirlpool Galaxy, also known as Messier 51 or NGC 5194, 23.1 million light years away with its enormous spiral arms. The supernova 2022A in the spiral galaxy pair ARP 299 fascinates with its bizarre play of colors. Even the Ring Nebula, an old cosmic acquaintance, shines in new splendor thanks to Webb's technology. Thanks to James Webb's filter technologies, the telescope not only provides us with fascinating images of the immense splendor of the universe, we can now study these formations and many other discoveries in a way never before seen in human history. The observation of a very special star now even allows us to see for the first time what our sun looked like in the early stages of its birth. Stars don't just form like that. Have you ever wondered how a star is actually formed? In theory, it starts out as a collection of gas and dust that is set in motion by forces such as the pressure from other stars or the influence of a supernova explosion. By rotating faster and faster, the cloud is pulled together by its own gravity until it becomes more and more dense. Then the temperature and pressure in the center continue to increase, and it begins to boil in the center until finally the process of nuclear fusion is initiated. Voila! The star is born. The fusion process then continues for millions or billions of years. Our sun went through this process around 4.5 billion years ago, and it's still shining. The elements for fusion basically still come from the cloud from which the sun was born. All our knowledge about the birth of stars was initially theoretical. Scientists reconstructed the process from basic physics and the rest they simply deduced from Einstein's formulas for relativity. It was only much later that they saw the first young stars in the cosmos with their own eyes and were able to confirm their theories through observations. What did the young sun look like? If we want to know what our star looked like shortly after its birth, we have to look at Herbig Harrow 211. The James Webb Space Telescope has provided a magnificent image of this star that gives us a unique impression of what our sun must have looked like during its birth. Herbig Harrow 211, or HH211, shows the very young star in the center and the bipolar jets of matter to the left and right. Herbig Harrow objects are basically phenomena in space that are associated with the formation of young stars and star-forming regions. They are named after the astronomers George Herbig and Guillermo Harrow. Both researchers discovered these wonderful and fascinating objects at almost the same time in the 1950s. Just imagine, what looks like a silent or almost reverent star birth is actually racing through interstellar space at supersonic speed. The Herbig Harrows are actually the glowing spots that surround the young star. They are formed when young stars release matter into interstellar space. Of course, this is also facilitated by the speed at which the star is moving. The protostar in this image therefore shows what our 4.5 billion year old sun might have looked like when it was only a few tens of thousands of years old and had only 8% of its current mass. Young stars like this one initially absorb more mass in their surroundings and grow significantly at the beginning of their lives. In later phases, however, stars shrink again. Our sun also loses mass, but to an extremely small extent. The sun's mass loss is mainly due to the solar wind the constant stream of charged particles blown from the Sun's surface into space. Experts estimate the average mass loss of the Sun to be around 4.5 million tons per second. At first glance, this sounds enormous, but in view of the total mass of the Sun, this amount is nevertheless extremely small. Since our Sun has grown up, the annual loss of mass over the course of its lifetime to date has only led to an extremely small change in its total mass, and this will remain the case for quite some time. Our star 
has only just reached the middle of its life. Why does the young star emit jets? The jets of HH211 are energetic streams of matter that are ejected from the young star and glow in fantastic colors in space. In fact, these jets consist mainly of gas and dust moving through space at extremely high speeds. Almost all herbig harrow objects are accompanied by these luminous streams. They play a prominent role in the study of the mysteries of star formation and the interactions of young stars with their environment. The jets of HH211 are bipolar, which means that they propagate in opposite directions. They extend into space along the axis of rotation of the young star and spread both upwards and downwards. Typical of these jets is their extremely high speed, which can often reach several hundred kilometers per second. This high speed is the result of the enormous energy released by the interaction of matter into the protostar. When the jets hit the surrounding interstellar medium, they create shock fronts with increased density and temperatures. In the shock fronts, the jet material encounters interstellar gas and dust. These shock fronts once again offer a colorful spectacle, perfectly captured by James Webb. Thanks to the unique light intensity that the telescope can capture and display, Herbig Harrow objects such as HH211 can now be studied in even greater detail. Light reveals a lot about the processes surrounding this object, which is around 1,000 light years away. The light waves reveal details about the elements involved, the density of dust and gas accumulations, and the velocities at play around the object. After examining the data from HH211, the researchers found that the jets are rich in molecules, including carbon monoxide, silicon monoxide, and molecular hydrogen. For the researchers, HH211 is an ideal object to study as it is one of the youngest and closest stars to eject matter. Thanks to the James Webb Space Telescope, we can now follow the birth of stars more closely and accurately than ever before. What did the first stars look like? Would you believe me if I told you that we have no idea how the first stars in the cosmos were actually formed? That sounds crazy, but it's true. No researcher has ever seen or analyzed such a star in detail. But why is that actually the case? Well, seeing the early phase of the universe is not easy. The light that reaches us is greatly stretched by the expansion of space and shifted into the red range. The oldest light signals that James Webb has been able to identify so far are dark red and blurred. In fact, we don't even know yet whether these are really galaxies. And how could we recognize individual stars within these formations? It seems almost impossible, were it not for a lucky coincidence. One of the oldest single stars ever discovered is WHL0137-LS, which scientists also call Erendel, the Star of the Dawn. It only stood out because it was significantly magnified by the gravitational lensing effect. The gravitational lensing effect always occurs when a very massive object, such as a galaxy or even a black hole, causes a curvature in the upstream space-time. The curvature acts like a convex lens and sometimes magnifies objects in the background to such an extent that individual stars become visible that we would never be able to recognize under normal circumstances. They are simply too small in the vastness of the cosmos. So, the discovery of Eurendel was truly a stroke of luck. Another object that is very likely one of the oldest single stars is SMSS J03 1300.36-670-839.3 or SM0313 for short. Researchers have calculated that this star could be 13.6 billion years old. This suggests that this star is one of the first generation. Researchers refer to these so far purely hypothetical stars as Population 2 stars. The prototypes of the stars presumably formed from clouds that remained as primordial gases and dust from the Big Bang. Due to increasing force shifts in the cosmos, these clouds began to vibrate, condensed, collapsed under their weight, and began fusion processes. Compared to today's stars, these first types of stars were probably all huge and massive. According to previous assumptions, a decisive factor in the formation of the first very large stars was the absence of heavy elements. This means that only light elements were available for the first stars, and this had a profound effect on the properties of the population three stars. These first stars were very massive, some estimated to be hundreds to thousands of times more massive than our sun. 
Due to their enormous mass and almost pure hydrogen-helium composition, they produced intense radiation and temperatures of tens of thousands of degrees Celsius. Due to these extreme conditions, they only had a very short lifespan of a few hundred thousand years. It was only when these stars exploded that heavy elements came into circulation and formed the basis for the formation of new types of stars and eventually stars like our Sun. However, all these scenarios are pure theories so far. Scientists would love to see Population 3 stars in all their power. The existence of SM0313 has not yet been proven 100%. In plain language, this means that neither the age nor the composition of the star could be clearly determined. The facility that scientists used to find what is believed to be the oldest single star ever sighted in the universe was destroyed in a fire in 2003. Now, the astronomical community is eagerly awaiting the day when James Webb will try to find the extremely distant star again. The formation of the very first stars in the universe is a fascinating topic that will keep us busy for quite some time. James Webb has already shown that the first galaxies look very different from what researchers had imagined, and we can look forward to seeing what surprises this exceptional telescope will bring us. Never miss a new video and subscribe to the channel now.